What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to try to jump into the sketch for this one because it's pretty complicated. It's pretty complicated. All right, so what's happening, everybody? Matthias, uh, Jeremy, Joyce, Toe, Mater, Amanda, Enrique, Kim, Cubs win. How's everybody doing? Well, I'm excited to paint this one. Hopefully I can pull it off. It's, it's a bit complicated as far as drawing and stuff, um, but I'll try to get a quick sketch down and just see where where it takes us. So let's see the house is actually slightly at this angle. Okay, feel pretty good about that, I believe. All right, looks pretty good. Nice perspective. Should be good enough to paint. Uh, looks like it's hard to tell what's going on over here. It's kind of a jumble of things happening, trees and stuff. So nice trees coming across this thing. It's going to be really fun to paint those. Hopefully. Try not to overdo it, but there are some nice designs on these shapes that can be made. Okay. Sorry, my pencil is very light. Probably try using a darker one, um, just because. Just because, why not? This is stuff's gonna be pretty dark, so. And this tree limbs and stuff, you know, if some of this, if some of the pencil peeks through in the end, it's not really a big deal because. Is what I want to show, you know. Um, so looks like right about here we got this house thingy. My voice is so calm. Thanks, I appreciate that. I mean, I can like yell at you guys if you want and be like crazy or something, but it's not really me, you know what I'm saying? But, um, <clears throat> what's going on, Dawn? Matthew, Anna, that one Asian failure. <laughs> oh man, Jess K, what's happening? Uh, Jess K, it might be, it's it's not really blurry, it might be your, um, click the little cog icon on your YouTube, it could be just internet quality, usually you have to change the, uh, change the setting to like 720 or something, um, a lot of times when you're watching a stream or some kind of video, it'll kind of, YouTube will kind of drop the quality so that you can watch it in real time. Wow, 4.15 a.m. Wow, thanks for tuning in, uh, Toe Mater. That's crazy early. Although it is Saturday over there, so... I mean, that's pretty early for the weekend, though. Glad you... Glad you tuned in. You must be in Asia somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where you would be, but... Or Middle East, maybe? Middle East? Asia? I'm not really sure. I know some places in Asia right now, it's like early morning, morning time. But 4.15, that's, yeah, that's... What's going on? What's happening? Nothing really, just doing a little sketch here, but I'm going to be painting this soon, hopefully. Got some nice tree back here going up. Don't know if I'll put that in or not, but we'll draw it in another 
roof right here. Don't know if it's necessary, but I do kind of like it. Some windows. So I'm using a 2B pencil this time rather than a 2H. So it's a little bit darker. <clears throat> That's why it just looks a little bit, you know, I wanted it a little more solid looking. So we got window there, window there. This one might be a bit smaller. This door thingy on, and then window there. No, I got it focused. It's not blurry. I mean, it's not blurry. It's definitely focused. I mean, it's definitely not, it's not blurry, at least on my end. And everything looks good with the stream, quality's good and everything, so, you know, I don't know. Don't know what to say. Sometimes it just happens, you know. Especially if you're watching something live. If you watch the replay, it's all going to be in focus. Everything is focused here. So these trees, actually, now that I'm looking at it, they come down a little bit more into the foreground here. Got some other trees and stuff. Okay. Um <clears throat> Yeah, it must just be, you know, it's just internet problems, you know, live streaming. But on my side, it's all good, so I don't know what to say. I can't improve, I can't, there's nothing I can improve on if it's good on my side. There's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. So, a little shrub, a little tree there. Got some other stuff growing up here. Maybe another house. Should I put it in this other house? Maybe to give a little bit of context, add more depth thing here. I might leave this, some kind of gate here, probably leave that out. Yeah, let's leave that thing out. We'll just make this all greenery. Yeah, you gotta change your settings on the video. If you see a little cog icon at the bottom corner, don't go, don't change it from auto to some kind of quality. Change it to like 720 or 540 or whatever they say, whatever it says. That's how you, because when it has auto, it's constantly moving between different, depending on your connection, it's constantly moving between different qualities. So when it gets blurry for you guys, it's because YouTube is lowering the quality because your internet isn't fast enough kind of what it does. But if you change it to a certain quality, then it forces it to use that quality. So there you go. Internet 101, folks. Internet video 101. Something like that. Okay, boom. I think this is pretty good. For now, it's pretty good, pretty solid sketch, I think. Hopefully it'll come out right. Hopefully it'll come out pretty well. There's a tree back here. I'm not sure if I want that in there. I feel like this is, you know, maybe a very faint tree back here. Very light and blurry. Just to give it a little more depth. So I'm not really sure how to go about this one. Uh, it's a lot going on here. So... Yeah, we'll try it. We'll do my, I'll do my best here. I'll definitely do my best.
do my best here. So that's a pretty good sketch. 10 minutes in, and that's what we got to work with. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, it looks like in this painting, nothing's going to be absolutely white of the paper. So, you know, I could leave the sky white, but I think it's a cloudy day, so I kind of want that. I'm going to make it a little bit gray. So I'm going to use ivory black, a little bit of ultramarine blue to cool it down. Because this, this whole scene is kind of cool light, cool light. So ivory black with ultramarine blue, so we get like a cool dark. Maybe a touch of transparent red oxide just, you know, to give a little more interesting colors and stuff. Um, so I'm going to try to, I'm just going to spray a lot of the paper to start out with. Just so we're, so we're good here. Um, mixing up some color here <clears throat> I'm trying to think about how to go about this <clears throat> so I know I want the sky we'll make it this will be a very light gray right but it's also gonna have you know touches of blue here and there more blue we'll just go over this whole thing um, we'll go over this brick thing So I've painted a few overcast scenes from life, like in my my plain air series, my plain air adventures. Uh, and I've always made the skies kind of gray and stuff, so hopefully this will work. Hopefully this will work out. What I'm doing now, I'm mixing up a cooler green that I want to put right back here for this tree. And I just want it to kind of blend out, get really soft. That's just going to help add some depth back there, I think. That's my hope, anyway. I'm going to keep this keep this wet, keep it moving. I don't want any hard edges right now. Everything's soft. Try to take some of this pigment off, maybe. Still trying to plan this in my head a bit. <clears throat> I am a transparent red oxide junkie. Yes, I am. It's one of my favorite colors. Um, yeah, watercolor is difficult, Jessica, for sure. Watercolor is difficult. No, Amanda, I think uh, YouTube's always done that auto type of thing. It's always done that um, many years that I can remember. <clears throat> Even this house, I don't think I want it to be white. Um, so I'm just, I'm, tr I'm trying to, I'm just trying to think how to go about this. Do I do a whole wash over the whole thing? I think I do. I think that's, I think that's what I start out with. So the spray bottle, I'm just using water. Just trying to keep soft edges, basically. Um, but I'm going to do just a, a mix of a bunch of different colors, right? So for this beginning, and I already sprayed my palette as well, so there's always, there's a, you know, all my colors are wet and everything. Just for anyone who wanted to know. So a cooler color up here, cooler brown, and as it goes downward, you got to be careful here because I don't want to get it on the, the white of the house. As it goes downward, I'm going to go into more transparent red oxide, maybe some purple in there as well. Ultramarine violet deep. But this is all going to dry very light, I think, so I'm probably going to have to go over it again. I kind of struggle with these kind of scenes, these like overcast scenes, so it is very difficult for me. These are very challenging. Let's get some purple in there. 
So now I'm just, I'm kind of adding just straight pigment. And that way I'm avoiding adding, having like blooms. You know, those cauliflower looking blooms that you get. That sometimes they can be kind of ugly. So I'm just avoiding that by adding pigment rather than more water. We are getting some blooms and stuff, but it's only because of everything is wet. <clears throat> okay, I don't really know what I'm doing here. But I kind of have an idea. I just have some kind of idea what I'm trying to do. I start to see hard edges and just spray a little more water, keep it alive just a little bit longer. So that green's kind of flat, so we'll add try to keep some of that purple showing throughout the whole painting. going on Philip thanks for tuning in glad to see you here hope all is well Like I said, I'm just starting out with the washes at the beginning here, kind of crazy. Every painting I do, I kind of approach it differently. <laughs> like, it just depends on what I'm feeling in the moment. Don't want these greens to look too warm. This is all cool light, so we want it. Warmer shadows with cooler lights. So all these light colors are gonna be much cooler. You know, we can have some warms in here. But it's kind of more for the dark areas. Yeah, maybe I do leave the house light like that, but I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna have to tone that down. This is just the first layer, so it's don't have to be too concerned with anything. Thanks, Jensen. I appreciate it. Glad to hear that. I have a question for you. Do you continue to draw? Oh, that's for Philip. Huh. Sorry. I'm answering other people's questions that aren't even directed toward me. Getting too excited. Okay. Just lifting off some pig pigment here now that it's drying a bit more. Um, so what I need to do, I need to go over this house. There's a roof back here. It's a bit darker. But 
this should be like very light gray maybe I don't really know probably should have left the sky white now that I'm looking at it but you know it's too late now so what am I gonna do can't do anything about it I've gone too far so now I just gotta gotta go with what I did What I need to do, bring the value down to the house. Now everything kind of sits a little bit more together. You know, nothing's really sticking out too much. I can put more purple or something on more blue into areas of this house. Just to give it a bit more color. Looks crazy right now, but uh, Hopefully we can pull this one together. Oh, thanks, Joy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I have some, uh, it's a lot of hip hop type of tracks, but there's some in there that are piano and, and there's all different kinds, you know? So if there's one you don't like, just try the next one and, some of them are more progressive as they go on, some of my music. Um, some of them are more repetitive and some of them are more progressive, so they change every section. But uh, yeah, I hope you, hope you enjoy those. So for anybody that doesn't know, I have a Bandcamp page with instrumentals and stuff that I make. So if you wanna check out my music today, it's actually um, on Bandcamp. If you purchase any of the music on there, it actually, they don't take a fee from it today. They do it on some Fridays. Um, so I would get all the all the money from that purchase. Like, so if you spend a dollar on a track, like I get the whole dollar rather than like 70 cents or whatever. But also check out my website, shaverfineart.com. I have some drawings on there and watercolors like these. Like this is how I hope this watercolor turns out. So <laughs> that's what we're looking at here. Um, anyway, check that out on my website. And just go to my support page. You can see I have like all these other links like donate and the band camp and the Patreon and all that stuff. So I'd definitely check that out. Yeah, I haven't made music in a little while, but uh, hopefully I can get back to making some new tracks um, eventually when I feel inspired, when I feel like I can make something new. Oh yeah, I'm glad you picked up on that, Philip. He says, I like on your band camp when you put a few words about what inspired you to create the song, like where your head was during the process. Yeah, I tried to do that because some of them are so emotional. Like, it, you know, it just, it's really like a a record of, of what I was doing at that time. I mean, there's some old tracks on there that I made when I was in high school, like 12 years ago, 13 years ago. So. It's interesting. There's some that are very old, and then there's some that are like, you know, I made last year when I was going through a rough time in my life and all this stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Selma says, my problem that is that I can't control my brush. What kind of brush do you use now, please? Well, there's no brush that's going to make you be able to control it better. Obviously, it's something you need to work on, but I'm using a number eight mop or quill brush it's all it's not about the tools you have it's how you use them you know i did many watercolors where i used these free i used these free cheap brushes that i had laying around i used these for like two years you know it's about how you use your items so i would say just keep either try a different brush or start using, start trying to really control the one you have, you know, just keep working at it. There's a link in the chat to the brush I use. It says quill brush that Amanda posted. Yeah, I mean, I like, I, I use this big brush for small paintings, you know, there's, it's, it's crazy. Very true, Philip. Philip says, thank God we have art to get through difficult times. Yeah, it's very true. I agree. Looks like I got some little blooms there, but 
It's all right. This isn't, it's not really going to show through. It's going to blend in with all these tree shapes that I'm going to do on top of this. So overall, we can see the harmony here. We have some green, purple, and this brown. So that's kind of the harmony I'm going, sticking with here. This cooler green, these purples and browns. Um, it's kind of what I see in the photo as well. I'll show you guys the reference photo in case you haven't seen it. So this is kind of what we're going for. And right now, right now it's very blurry. We have this blurred, very light looking painting. But as I put on the next two layers, it's really gonna come to life, I think. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can make something interesting. <clears throat> Oh, I get what you're saying, Selma. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's, these brushes are kind of softer. They're not too, it's not like a bristle brush. It's like a soft brush um, that I use. You know, I use these softer brushes for watercolor. So all these other brushes I have, they're very similar to the one I'm using now. They're just these round brushes that are soft. So I hope that helps. Ian says, just found your channel and work. Thank you for sharing your process. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, be sure if you want to check out my work, check out my Instagram. It's uh, Schaefer Art on Instagram. So you can see like a whole little portfolio of all my work basically. Or you can check out my website, SchaeferFineArt.com. Greetings from Mexico. Thanks for tuning in all the way from Mexico. What are some things to draw for beginners? Asks uh, Jensen. Um, any, I mean, any, anything simple. You know, this is kind of complex because there's just there's a lot of things going on. There's perspective, there's proportion, there's different sizes and shapes. So stick with simple objects in the very beginning. You know, stuff that you have laying around your house. Start drawing from life. Um, <clears throat> you know. What brand paint are you using? Is that tube or cake? I use tube paint that I squeeze out myself. I use M. Graham watercolors, but the brand the brand doesn't really matter, you know. But I, I do use tube, high quality tube paint. Hope that answers your question. Um, Tomater says I have a question. Can we send our art progress for you? Um, Yeah, you can send me, I mean, I, I do critiques uh, every few weeks, like every, the next few live streams I'll be doing a critique, like the next, in the next three live streams, so actually I'll, I'll mention that now. Um, so on live stream 130, I'm going to be doing a critique, so if you want to send me one piece of art to info at shaverfineart.com, just send me an email. Just go to your email and type in info at shaferfineart.com. Send me an email, attach a photo of one of your art pieces, and I will critique it on one of the streams on a live stream 130. So definitely check that out. So this is pretty much dry. Um, sorry for taking so long, folks, but glad I could catch up with the chat here. I'm not sure what your question is, Silver Chariot. He says, Brandon, can you draw a, can you a draw my life? Can you a draw my life? I don't think I can. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, this is dry, so cool. Sorry for that, folks. Thanks for being patient. Um, luckily, we have that handy little fan there. Shout out to my grandmother for surprising me with that little one a few weeks ago. It's very helpful. Very, very helpful. Um, all right, what do we do now? That's the question, right? What do we do now? So what I'm looking at now is, is what needs to be darker? Obviously, we leave the sky alone. We leave this tree that I put back in here. We leave that alone. I think we need to darken the chimneys here a bit and maybe this roof, put the shadow under the roof, maybe darken it slightly so that we get more of a gradient up to this lighter part. Um, obviously the window stuff need to be darker. That's kind of another layer. These greenery needs to be darker and these trees. So 
We're making good progress. We're making good progress, I think. We just need a few more things here. You know, this house over here we could put in darker trees. I think I'm gonna leave the darker trees almost last because there's branches that kind of go across this roof. So I want, I need to do the roof first. So we'll start back into the scene and then move forward. So that's how, and kind of go from up on the page to down the page. It's kind of how I try to think about it. So that's kind of what I'm gonna try to do here. Um, so there's actually trees way in the background here. See if I can put in just a slightly lighter value or slightly darker value, but just something very lightly to suggest something back there, right? And it's, it's going to get covered up kind of, but you know, just to have something back there, it just it's going to add something to it, hopefully. So that's all it takes right there, you know, just a little bit of suggestion of stuff. <clears throat> you know, if I want on top of that later on, I can put in some lines or something. I don't think I'm going to do that, though. Um, okay, let's... Stop talking, start doing. I need to spray my palette a bit. A lot of these colors dry very quickly. I tend to keep my apartment pretty warm, kind of warm, so. You know, it's like 73 Fahrenheit or something, so everything dries. Seems to dry very quickly. So now I'm going to mix up some transparent red oxide, which is like brown, with some purple, ultramarine violet deep, which makes a very beautiful mixture. And I'm uh, going to just kind of put it on this roof. So we're painting wet on dry right now. It's kind of what I like to do a lot of the time. I do, I do do wet into wet, of course. I think you have to, you know, as a watercolorist, like, you got to do wet into wet. I'm just going to spray that slightly just so we get some soft edges there. Attempt, attempts to get some soft edges. So what I'm trying to do here, folks, is we're just getting... I don't want to, I don't really want to paint this thing like solidly. Because it is kind of like a textured kind of roof. So if I can show some of that, at least describe a little bit of that. And let's get some cooler color toward the top. So I'm trying to just get a gradient to that kind of lighter edge that's up there. But I know, I know that I need, and this is almost, probably need to save it for the next layer, but I can put some of it in right now. There's a very dark edge on this thing, right? Uh, 
Oh, draw my life video. I get what you're saying. So where do you submit the critiques? You send an email. Go to your email, open up your email, and send an email to me, info at schaeferfineart.com. Info at schaeferfineart.com. I'll put it up one more time, there we go. It's also in the chat. So send an email, info at schaeferfineart.com. Very simple, very, very simple. We're gonna soften some of this. Boom. All right, looking pretty nice. Looking pretty nice. We can also Darken some of the chimney, try to keep things soft. We're getting a nice little atmosphere here with this one. I may need to darken that roof line, or at least put like, you know, put like some kind of edge on part of it, right? Just to separate it slightly, nothing too crazy. <clears throat> What's going on, Deborah? Thanks for tuning in. I have no idea what kind of roof this, or what they do. It looks like this is in England somewhere or something, or Europe somewhere, I'm not exactly sure. But I'm not sure how they, when I went to England I did see roofs like this, but I couldn't tell you what they, how they manage them or what they do or anything. You don't see these in America, that's for sure. I've never seen one in America. So we're missing, we're missing something here. And we're missing, uh, missing this little part, this little roof. Nice, looks nice. Oh, wow. Jensen, do you have an e do you have an email address? Open up your email client, send me an email. This is very, very simple. If you go to my site and click the little envelope icon somewhere on my site, that's how you can send me an email. <clears throat> so if you go to my site, see the little envelope with all, next to all the little icons underneath Shaver Fine Art, see the little envelope, click the envelope. That's how you send me an email. It'll open up your email client that you use. Yep, no worries, no worries. Hope you get it figured out. Or just go to my just go to my contact page on my site, send me an email without the photos and I'll reply to you and then you can attach a photo. <laughs> you know, whatever you can do, just
Okay. Just trying to plan my attack here, folks. Trying to plan my attack. So, um, I think we do the windows and stuff now. I'm really going to try to focus on this area because it's kind of my focal point. And the rest of this greenery is going to support this thing, so, you know, just worry about this focal point for now. What colors are you using to make your dark again? Because I know you almost never use black. Well, these dark colors, uh, yeah, it's definitely not black, as you can see, if I zoom in there. And you know, there's definitely like purples and browns. It's hard to, it's really hard to see because it's so dark anyway. But, um, and the way this camera is, you know, it's just, it's hard to get the right colors. I'm using uh, transparent red oxide, ultramarine violet deep, ultramarine blue, a touch of alizarin crimson. Now I'm mixing into this has viridian in it. So I kind of just vary a bunch of different colors into it depending on what kind of temperature I want it to be or what kind of hue I want it to give off. It's all just a bunch of different stuff, you know. If I want it more red or more warm, I can put alizarin in it or transparent red oxide. If I want it cooler, I can add that purple or ultramarine blue in it. I kind of just think in terms of temperature. Because if it's just black, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to look so cold and it's going to kill the vibe of this whole thing. You know, this whole thing has a harmony to it. So by making the dark not super duperly dark and not having some kind of temperature to it, it's going to harmonize a bit more, I feel, anyway. I mean, some areas can be so dark that you can't really tell, but you still want them to appear warm. Normally your darkest dark, you want it to be warm, very, very warm. Otherwise, it, a lot of the times if you make it cold, it's not gonna look right. The only time it should be, your dark should be very cold is if you're painting like a glacier or something that's like super blue like that where it has to be cold. But mostly the other time, you want it to be a very warm mixture. So like all these darks I'm making and stuff, these are warm. There's just more brown in them than blue. You know, there's blue and brown in, in all these mixtures, but there's more brown. So it just comes across cooler, or uh, warmer, excuse me. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to do that, but that actually it's okay, it's not a big deal. I wanted some shadowing here. Subtle shadowing. I want that under the roof too. Like this is way too sharp, you know? I wanted like... I'm gonna make some... I'm 
and some diffused looking shadow. I'm going to clean this brush really nicely and then soften all that. Don't want a hard edge. See what I'm saying? Gives it more form. It's nice to soften some areas. Otherwise, it just doesn't look. Yeah, it's a little expensive, but it's worth it. You know, this thing's lasted me a year now. I've had this thing for one year, and I mean, I mean, all the hairs are still in there nicely. It's still a nice shape. I mean, it's definitely worth the price. It's like $20 US. I know it's hard if you live in a different country. It's going to be very expensive uh, just because of the currency and stuff. But if you're in the US, I definitely recommend getting like a nice brush. And it doesn't have to be expensive, you know. But the one I'm using is kind of expensive, I guess. There's much more expensive ones out there, I'll tell you that. Okay, uh, what else, what else, what else, folks? What else can we do here? Got a nice little window down here, I can suggest. It's a little too big, but it's a little too late now to worry about it. So we can just soften it. There we go. Not bad. <clears throat> How can someone dislike my videos? Um, I don't know. I think it's just a bunch of kids, probably. Or it's just somebody who... I don't know. <laughs> somebody I don't want to hang around, you know? Maybe they dislike disliked one small thing I said or something. They get all offended. You know, who knows? No problem. No problem, Gina. Yeah, if you buy that through, if you buy anything through the Amazon links in the uh, chat, I get a small commission from it. No extra cost to you. It actually takes away from Amazon. So I get like 4%. So let's say theoretically you spend $100 on stuff. I get around 4 to $5. So it's not a huge commission. But when you have like a lot of people buying stuff every month over a lot of time, you know, it adds up, it adds up a little bit. So it is helpful to me. If you are to buy any supplies through Amazon, I appreciate if you click the link first and then buy whatever you want to buy. Um, but if you click the link and you buy something, you have to buy it within 24 hours of clicking that link. So that's how I get the commission. So I hope that makes sense. It's kind of cool just like an, an affiliate thing that I have set up. Okay, I think we move on to some of the greenery here out in front. I can try to put in some darks here. Probably, I think I need, I think I need some mid-tones here because that, the light is just too light. I'm going to need, definitely want all these leaves and stuff to be soft, so that's a challenge. And how do you soften it? Well, you just use your finger and just do this. <laughs> Make it look like leaves and stuff. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be too crazy. See what it did there? Just softened it, made it look like a tree. No big deal. Put some dark underneath there. Boom. Put some more dark in here. Boom. 
No big deal. Because this stuff all supports that house. It's not, it's not like a, you know, it's not a whole lot to worry about here, folks. Just... Not too much to worry about. You know, I don't want things to look too sharp like they are right now, so we we'll just add a little bit of water there. Let's see, we're 51 minutes in. I think we're making pretty good time. You know, I got most of the focal point painted in there. It's just trying to get in the rest of this stuff. And we'll, we'll add more details and more darks and stuff later on. It's just, uh, you know, for now, I think that's pretty good. So now it's just focusing on this area, darkening all this stuff. And then maybe we'll see, you know, put that one dark underneath there on the roof line. Maybe some stuff on the windows or the door again and under that roof. And uh, we'll bring this thing together, bring it home. Yeah, M, M. Graham's pretty good. Am I still doing graphic design? Yes, I am. It's still my day job. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately for me, but you know, it is what it is right now. I just gotta, what about you? How's your, how's your stuff going? I know you got that job a few years ago. How's everything going for you, man? It's been a while. Um, was I ever bullied? Not really. I don't think so. What acrylic painting set would you recommend? I mean, I don't really recommend any kind of set. I would just just get some colors, you know, from Golden. Golden paint is pretty good for acrylic. Yeah, I, I meant to say, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm glad you picked up on that. Uh, yeah. Well, it's definitely not easy, what I'm doing. You know, I'm taking my time here, um, mixing up some new color. But it's definitely not easy. I know it may look easy, but I've done a lot of these paintings, and I've painted a lot from life. You know, it just takes time and practice, you know? It's just... Takes time and practice and patience and see I'm kind of going back, fixing some things, messing some things up, probably overworking some things. You know, it's it's it takes a lot of time. So don't get discouraged. Don't compare yourself to me. You know, we're all on a different journey. Yeah, beginner set Acrylic set from Liquitex, yeah, that's what I used in the beginning too. That's a good one. But if you really want really good paint, then get a golden. But yeah, golden is more like artist quality. So just if you want to start out, just get student quality paint. It's fine. That's what I did. I got Liquitex for a beginning. I kind of forgot about that one. Oh, okay, that's cool, Matthew. Whatever works, man, that's cool. Sounds good. As long as you like what you're doing, then that's all that matters, you know? That's all that matters at the end of the day. Glad to hear everything's going well.
go, a little detail there. That's pretty nice. <clears throat> how long did it take you? How long did it take you to where you are now? Uh, 30 years. <laughs> 30 years. I used to have a, I had a bunch of golden paint too. I mean, you just, you know, it, it's, golden paint actually lasts you a while, you know, it looks expensive, but it's much stronger in pigment, so you don't use a lot of it, you know. But yeah, I know what you mean, it's not, it's not the cheapest stuff. Definitely not the cheapest stuff you could get. But yeah, Jim Carrey, he is, he is rich, <laughs> of course. I am not. I am not rich. I just, I knew what I wanted to do, man. I knew I wanted to be a painter, so I invested in all that paint, and a lot of it ended up, didn't get used. I had to get, when I stopped cruising acrylics, I just sold it to somebody for very, very cheap. I just had to get it out of my house, you know. But, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, day de day jobs definitely suck, but you know, sometimes you need them. Hopefully not forever, but at least for me, hopefully not forever. You know, I'm trying to do this thing. I, I, I don't like that I messed up the roof here. It should have been up more. Should have been more of the house showing instead of the roof down that low. But I realize I messed that up. That's okay. Just don't look at it. Don't look there. All right, let's do the road, and then we'll move branch out, <laughs> branch out into the greenery. You guys catching these, man? You guys catching these puns? I do them, and I don't even mean to do them. They just happen. Okay. Put some purple, purple, ultramarine blue. Ooh, that's kind of dark. It's kind of dark, huh? Let's kind of change that one. There we go. More blue. Need some cooler, cooler tones in here. Let's soften all this. It's a little too sharp. Do you use other media for painting besides watercolor? Not really, not anymore. Sometimes I use gouache, which is very similar to watercolor. Um, I used to use acrylics many years ago, and then I used oils like two years ago. And uh, I still have some oil supplies, but um, just don't want to. I think I'm just gonna keep sticking with watercolor. Um, you know, I like being able to ship it very easily. I like the ease of cleaning it. I like the ease of the materials, just buying some paper, not expensive canvases or panels. Um, you know, it just, it all works out. It's all so much better for me than, I love being able to go out in plain air and just use it very easily, very simply. With oil painting, I couldn't really do that. It was much more challenging. I needed really high quality materials, so everything was very expensive. I needed to paint on the oil primed linen and all that stuff, you know, it's just, it gets too crazy. And then not even selling any of the work, it's like, oh, okay, well, I did all this stuff, spent all this money, and then the work doesn't even sell. So I decided, you know what, I like doing plain air more. And uh, watercolor allows me to just set up and paint anywhere. I can stand up on the street, really literally paint anywhere without a tripod, without heavy materials, without solvents, without all this nonsense that oil painting kind of 
makes you use, you know, you kind of have to use. Not have to use, but it definitely makes it easier to use solvents and stuff. You know, some people say, well, you don't have to use solvents with oil painting. You can use oil. You can just use oil and clean your brush with that. Yeah, and then you have these oily rags laying around stacking up, and that's a fire hazard. And there's, there's been many studios and places burned down because of these oily rags that you have to dispose of, and they don't do it correctly. And then the whole place burns down. So, yeah, no thanks. No thanks. I think watercolor is for me. Yep, I I trust me. I I I went to the store one time, bought the uh, plywood, one eighth of an inch. Was it plywood or some kind of wood? Birch, birch panel. Cut it up myself, or had someone else cut it up for me that I knew. And then you have to prime them with the, with the GAC 100 from Golden. You got to do like three or four coats of that, or at least two coats. Let that dry, and then you got to prime them. I mean, there's like all the stuff you have to do. It's like. Gosh, you could just buy a sheet of paper for seven bucks, cut it up, and then just paint on it. It's like so much easier. Yeah, I'm not painting an oil painting, so I'm definitely not going to try it. So, anyway. Okay, um, well, what do we do now? Looks like we need some more pigment here. Um, it should be lighter. I need to really get working on this. I'm going too slow. I'm going too slow. Okay, uh, let's move into the greenery. Moving too slow here, folks. We need some large strokes. We need some bold, large strokes. Right? Let's just do it. You know, let's stop playing around. I'm not playing around. This ain't no game. <laughs> uh, okay. This is not a game. This is art. It's a serious business. Okay. See how serious this is? Look at this. Oh my gosh. A light misting there just to soften some stuff. I love the softness of these overcast scenes. Got to keep that going, keep the softness. And the little spritz of water will help kind of soften everything. All right. Let's get some dark. Let's go dark. I'm going to put these trees in here soon. See what I'm saying, folks? See what I'm saying? All right. Now we just need to do the same thing on the other side before we put those trees in. So let's try to do that. Got to mix more of that green color up. I don't even know how I made it. How do you mix green? Let's see. I think I used like a green color mixed with something else. All right, let's do it again. Let's try to make this good. Let's not get too crazy with it, you know? Only a little crazy with it. Let's mist that one. Keep it soft and flowing. Let's get a little cooler, cooler with the green now. Slightly cooler. 
So remember, this is cool light. So I want the shadows to appear warmer. All the light, everything that's lighting this up is cool from the clouds, cool light. dry brushing in there. Nice dry brushing against the house. I like that. Wizito, what's happening? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Grow some trees. <laughs> uh, sorry if I missed a question up there, folks. I was just being very serious and getting, you know, had to focus. So ask your question again. If I missed it, I apologize. Only a little bit, though. I only apologize. Very little. Just kidding. Okay. Get some darks in here. Really nice. Really, really nice. Or is it mean? This looks mean, man. Mean or nice? I don't know. I feel like we're missing like some splattering, right? Like for the greenery? Probably gonna add some of that later. But I feel like it needs just a little layer of that now. Some more splattering in there. Maybe on the road. Some like pebbles and stuff. I don't know. It's all just going to disappear because it's still wet. But some of it will stay there. Some of it will stay. There we go. You guys know I love the splattering. Just makes it look more natural, it gives it more depth, a little bit of texture. You guys see what I'm saying? We'll add more of that later on. All this was still wet, so all the when you splatter it it kind of just melts. We'll try to kill some of that. There we go. That looks really nice, so I really like how that came out. Um, okay. Well, I think we should do these trees now, because I think that's where we're at. I think that's where we're at. Hopefully I can do this. Hopefully I can pull this off. Do I change brushes, or so I, do I just do the whole painting with this one big brush? I think I just go for it. I made it this far with this one brush. I might as well just... Um... I think we just stick with it, why not? <clears throat> yeah, true, Philip. Philip says all those green values in the foreground is rich. Well, I wish I was as rich as these greens in the foreground, as you say. Um. Because <laughs> uh. at least then I'd look pretty. Okay. Um, all right, I gotta mix up some dark color here. We need some, we need some tree color. Let me find, let me find the tree color here on my palette. The trees are kind of, trees are kind of green. So get like a dark brownish green thing. Um, maybe some purple in there. Cause you know, we got the purple want some of that purple to stay in here. Well, I wish I was as rich as Jim Carrey as well. Actually, probably not. I don't want to be that rich. I wish I had like one-tenth of what he had. You know what I mean? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't need a lot. <laughs> one brush to rule them all. Who is Jim Carrey? I don't know. I really don't know who they're talking about. This Jim Carrey guy. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. You, th I think you'll end up going over the entire thing if you grab a smaller brush. So does that mean I should get a smaller brush or should I just stick with the large? I 
I know, we're getting old. I'm almost, I'll be 31 in a month. Next month I'll be 31. Just kidding, I'll be 23 next month. Okay, I got a dark green color here. Let's see if we can make some tree shapes. Let's see if we can do this, All right? So we'll just try to... Thicker at the bottom, right? So there's one nice branch. I hope I can... Ooh, I like it, I like it. Oh, look at that, that was beautiful. Oh, that was beautiful. Whew. Oh man, I love how that came off the brush like that. That was, oh, that was a little not beautiful, but that's all right, we'll just. Man, that was nice. I want to continue this one. There we go. That's pretty nice. That's cool. That's cool. Um, oh man, the Truman Show is awesome. The Truman Show is definitely awesome. Wow, people didn't know who Britney Spears was? Well, they're lucky, man. They're lucky. I like how everyone everyone here that's new is going to really think I'm turning 23. <laughs> Everybody's just like, oh, yeah, wow, he's going to turn 23. Okay, cool. <laughs> Nobody really knows, like, when I'm being serious or... Regular folks know the deal. They know I'm just being stupid. So this is pretty challenging making these uh, these limbs and stuff with this big brush. But I'm, I want to show you guys like uh, I want to show you guys like that you can have a lot of control with with a brush like this. You know, it's 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 not about the tools you have. It's like how you use them. You know what I'm saying? Just to get back into art speak, as uh, George Orwell would probably call it. <laughs> now everybody's going to go, who's George Orwell? Who's that guy? I don't know. I don't know who George Orwell is either. It's all new news to me.
Just trying to create something that looks a little more natural. You know, we just need... Bunch of twigs and stuff. Usually these smaller kinds of branches, you want them to be a lot lighter than the actual trunk. Lighter in value, lighter in color. So that's what I'm trying to do now. You can try to like dry brush some of these in here maybe. I think my brush is just too wet. <laughs> Remember when 1984 was fiction? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a joke that isn't funny, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny, but you know what I'm saying. It's not really funny. So now, what I can kind of do, I can kind of like soften some of these. We can dry brush. Let's see, we get like some kind of grayish, purpley green maybe. Like ultramarine violet deep with viridian. So what I'm trying to do, I'll show you guys what I'm trying to do here. If I can do this, just get a little bit of pigment. I want to dry brush some texture in there. Like there's, maybe there's some very few like leaves on some of these branches and stuff. It just kind of softens some areas, but also gives a little more texture. It's probably hard for you guys to even see what I'm doing, but just makes things look just a bit more natural. And what I can do, actually now what I can do, I can darken up some areas on these trunks and that's going to give more depth to these, the lighter things that I drew in there. We can add some dark to this foreground too now. What do you guys think? It's coming together. One thing I don't like, I don't like this little triangular shape there. It's very light. I'm gonna try to kill that a little bit. So, doesn't have to be anything crazy. We just paint over that. You know, something that bothers my eye like that, I try to just get rid of it. It's not a big deal. I did make the house like a little bit small, like the roof's kind of big compared to the house, but it's kind of cool. 
Um, Philip says, when you post photos of final paintings online for thumbnails and social media, do you scan them or question mark? I actually, I normally take a photo of them with my phone. <laughs> I put them on the floor, take a photo of them. And then what I do is I go to Photoshop and I, um, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically I, I, I create a square that's nine by 12. And then I pull the corners because normally it's wavy. This thing is wavy. You know, the painting is wavy and distorted. So I distort it. I, I, I uh, create, I basically distort it to where the edges and the corners line up to that nine by 12 square because that's what this painting is. And it kind of flattens it out. And then I just crop it and boom, it's done. So that's kind of how I do it for the long answer of how I do it. Um, so I think now we need, what do we need? We need like some more something. Let's just keep using this big brush, I guess. <laughs> I've used it this whole time, so might as well just stick with it. This video is how to use only one big brush for your entire painting because it is possible and I do it all the time, all the time. Just adding more texture in this area. So what I wanna do is, the reason I picked up my brush, I wanted to add like some branches and stuff over here, just to show that like, you know, there's stuff growing, there's stuff alive, there's stuff growing. Down here as well, I talked about that earlier. Okay. Even in here we can add. Don't wanna get too crazy with it though. But, um, you know, we just want things to look like it's all growing. Uh, can we see the reference real quick? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. There's the reference. There we go, there we go. So, you know, my house looks a little smooth or something, you know, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I need that dark, I need that dark thing under the, that's what I need, huh? I need this dark shadow here. Right, I need to like darken that up a bit. There we go. And just take it all the way across here. But you know, we don't want to do it just straight across. You know, we want to make it bumpy and textured and broken. We don't want it to be super smooth. It's kind of boring if you do that, you know. But there we go. That added a lot of depth to it, huh? And that purple is coming out really nicely there. Looks really beautiful to me. I really like that purple in there. I need to do a, a painting using only that ultramarine violet deep, that purple, and the transparent red oxide. I think that would make a beautiful painting. That could be a challenge, painting challenge, using only those two colors. That'd be pretty cool. How much would I charge for this picture? Uh, $65, that's how much I charge for all my watercolors. So if you go to my website, shaverfineart.com, you can see all the drawings and paintings I have for sale. This one will be up later tonight, most likely. Um, 
a few hours after the stream, that's when I'll put it up. So you can check out my website. And I also have a support page. You can donate to me on there if you feel like you like what I do. I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, Bandcamp, where I have like instrumentals and music that I make. Check all that out. And uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, folks, to these videos. Help, help uh, support the channel. Uh, do it. What am I doing? What kind of brush am I using? Uh, it's a link in the chat. I have a quill brush here. I forgot what, what I was doing. I was mixing up, oh, that kind of, oh, that paint, the challenge, that painting challenge. Yeah, I'm gonna schedule that for next time. I have a lot of little challenges like that I wanna do. Color challenges, we need more of those. Those are a lot of fun. I'm trying to see what kind of paintings you can make with just two or three colors. Those are always so much fun for me. So I know what I need to bring this thing together. We need some more splattering. Cause I know I did that earlier, but we kind of lost it. We kind of lost it. You know, there's a little bit there, a little bit here, but we need more, we need more, 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 more. I went over that beautiful stroke I did earlier, but it's okay. I feel like we just needed like a thicker branch running all the way up. Why? I don't know, but it just felt like we did. more prominent trees, I guess. I think I'm happier with that now. Although the trees are kind of mirroring each other, that's a little annoying. I just realized I did that. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Now they look very flat. Gosh darn it. Uh, what can I do? What can I do? I should have just left them alone. Why did I do that? Okay, that's better, I guess, that's better. And we can just soften a lot of this anyway, it's just. There we go. Ah, okay, splatter, and let's just call this one done. Just get it everywhere. All right. Okay. Just a little bit there. Just a little bit. Come on. There we go. Just a little bit over the roof. Not bad. It's not bad. I 
I messed with the trees. That was the upset. The trees, man, the trees. I messed with the trees and then I had to kind of modify them a bit and But oh well. Oh well. It is what it is. I can't fix it now. It went too far. But it didn't destroy the painting, it just, uh, you know, just wasn't good for the painting. So I'm just taking out some of the splatters, you know. Sometimes you just do a little too much, you just need to make it a little variety. Have a little variety, there we go. So I'm going to take the tape off because I don't think I'm going to do any more splattering or large washes or anything. If I do anything else, there'd be smaller details. Well, I'm always hard on myself. It, it looked really good, and then I... It still looks good. We got some softness there now, so it looks natural. It looks... It still looks natural. It just wasn't what I had, and it wasn't what I wanted. But it's not... It's not... It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. It still looks good. No doubt. And you're right, Gina. Only I will know. Exactly. And everybody who watched this stream. Let's dry it up real quick. Just a few little wet parts here. But I think it looks really good. I love the harmony. It's very nice, cool our harmony overall. To see a swatch of colors I used, I can show you. Um, these are the colors I use. Uh, for this particular painting, I mainly used transparent red oxide, viridian, ultramarine blue, uh, ultramarine violet deep, and ivory black. And a little bit of yellow ochre. But that's my whole palette right there. That's all my palette, that's what I use. Um, But for a painting like this, I didn't use all the colors on my palette. I just used a small selection. Ultramarine Violet Deep is really nice. Since we got it right there, looks really nice. Some in here and here. A lot in these, the brown mixtures, it really modifies that brown. They really gives it a nice cool appearance without graying it down too much. Cobalt teal is awesome as well, very strong. Yeah, if you look at my palette, cobalt teal just stands out like crazy right here. Cobalt teal. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's it, folks. I mean, uh, I'm pretty happy with this one. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it came out as well as it did, to be honest. There's one small part that bothers me here. Uh, I think I need to do something about it, and I'll do it right now. I think hopefully it'll f help it. Um, so part of it looks a little flat, and the reason is the front of this building is the same as the side. So I'm gonna modify the side very, very, very slightly. I think just conceptually, you know, if it's a cube. And the, let's say the light, I mean, it is diffused lighting scenario, but we can modify it just very, very slightly just to give it a corner. It needs like a corner here. And we can tone that part down. So the reason I'm doing that, I'm just trying to push the form a bit. I know it's probably hard for you guys to even see what I did. That's how slight I want it to be. But I'm gonna add, I'm gonna inject a little bit of color right here at that corner. So, see how subtle that is? 
Sometimes it just needs those very subtle things, at least on a piece like this where it's overcast. And uh, just help push the building a little bit. You know, we can even, let's see, let's get some viridian. I want to glaze right back here. So it's those small things that I just did kind of solidify the building just a little bit more. Uh, what tape did I use? There's a link to the tape there. It's kind of expensive, but it's always been really well, worked really well for me. It's called artist tape. It didn't used to be so expensive. It used to only be like seven or eight bucks, but now they kind of have it like, you know, $11 for one roll. It's like ridiculous, but you know what? It's, to me, it's worth it. it. It gets a nice edge most of the time. It doesn't rip the paper at all, at least this watercolor paper. So that's what I use. Um, yeah, are we missing anything here? Is there anything else it needs? I think we're good, you know? I think the only thing that bothers me is like, some of this is a little too sharp. I don't know why it bothers me, but it just does. There we go. I think that just a little bit of softening there. That helped, helped, helped a little bit. Let me darken that a bit more. There we go. Okay. Yeah, definitely it doesn't rip this watercolor paper. It's ripped other papers that I've used very slightly, but most like 99% of the time I don't get a rip on the page at all. Paper is perfect still, and there's no sticky residue. You know, it didn't really leak at all. You know, in the corners, very, very little bleeding but not much at all these corners didn't bleed at all and i used a lot of water at the beginning so as long as you have the tape down really nice it should be fine for you <clears throat> oh, candy thanks i appreciate that i'm glad i was able to fix what you were yelling at the screen about. Just let me know, man. Let me know. I fi you guys point stuff out and I do fix it when I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that big of an ego for, sometimes I do, but I try not to have that big of an ego. If you guys see something that's off, like I always try to fix it. I'm like, okay, thanks for helping me out. You know, cause I, I'm here to create a good painting, you know, <clears throat> this chimney is a little crooked, but I don't know, it's kind of nice, I guess. Slightly fix that. Make it look less crooked. Doesn't have to be perfect, you know? Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm going to soften this branch. This one branch that I put down first is too dark. There we go. More variety, variety. Um, <clears throat> what else? What are the small things? Let's see, we're an hour and 40 minutes in. That's pretty long for this one. It's pretty darn long. So I think I'm about to call this one done. So there you go, folks. I used this one brush the entire time. So it's definitely doable to use a big brush like this. It's all just about how you control it, how you use it. It's doable. I just did it. And this is a pretty big brush. As long as it comes to a nice point like that, I mean, you can... You're able to control stuff like that. But it also depends on how you paint. You know, if you paint very loose like me, then it's easier to control. I understand that. All right. 
Are there any scenes that you would not splatter? I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely been paintings on here where I didn't splatter. Um, and there's been there's been plain airs where I didn't splatter. Let me let me uh, find some actually. Ah, so here we go, folks. We got the big. This is my plain air collection that I've done over the last two years. Just a there's a little bit more I have, but this is the main bulk of it. Let's see if there's if I can find some stuff. There's no splatters. Um, yeah, here we go. Right here, first page. I'll show you. So no splattering on this one. You know, especially with these smaller ones, and I'm doing something a lot of small strokes. It doesn't really. It just doesn't call for splattering on that. You know, there's, this one probably could have used splattering, and I didn't. So this one would have been nice, I think, if I did splattering, like all these trees and stuff. This is from last autumn. Unfortunately, I didn't get out this autumn to do any of the fall colors. My trees right outside here, right outside my apartment, are turning yellow and red. Maybe I could paint them or something. I think a lot of these I didn't splatter. This one could have used splattering. Uh, didn't splatter here. So this whole sketchbook, you know, a lot of these actually would have benefited if I did splatter. Um, but these are all from life, you know. Another another one where I could have done some nice... Yeah, so this is interesting to look back on. One year ago, I wasn't really doing any splattering with these plain airs, at least. Um, and a lot of these could have really used it, to be honest. Like, this one I probably wouldn't have, you know, architecture like this. Probably wouldn't have splattered on that one, and I didn't. Um, so here we go, I started splattering a little bit there. It actually helped it, I think. But yeah, so um, you know, there's definitely there's definitely paintings where if you don't, if I wouldn't need a lot of texture or make it look that it, like it's alive or something, then I wouldn't splatter. You know, and I kind of overdid it on this one to be honest. Kind of splattered a little too much, and you know, I can kill some of that splattering just by softening a bit with some water. Um, but, you know, there's not too, it doesn't feel like too much. What it does is, is it just adds a little bit of life to all the greenery. And then it, now that I didn't splatter on the house at all, it kind of, you have this contrast of like splatter versus non-splattering, you know, so it's kind of cool. It's very nice. Would you splatter on an indoor scene? Okay. Good question. <laughs> Um, possibly yes, possibly yes, I would. Depends on the indoor scene. So, um, yeah, it depends on what it is. You know, if it's something that it's really clean and smooth and nice, then I probably wouldn't splatter, but let's say if I was doing like the inside of an old building or that's made of stone or something, you know, maybe a bit of light splattering, you know, maybe not these very, very dark splatters that I did, but maybe more of like a yellow ochre splattering or some other kind of lighter color that fits in with the whole scene to add a little bit of texture. Um, basically never say never, you know, <laughs> never say never. Um, but indoor scene, probably less, a lot less splattering. You know, I only splatter here just to, just gives a little more life to the scene. So this is the overall, this is the final painting, folks. I think we captured, I think I captured the, uh, man, I wish I would get the colors right. Yeah, you guys will have to see it when I post it online later on. We definitely get the, the mood of overcast scene, you know, and the life of these trees and everything. Pretty happy with that one. Yeah, if you guys can see that in the thumbnail down there, it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty good. Um. <clears throat> oh, that's a good good point, Gina. I always forget to do that, but yeah, if you if you have a wet wash and then you splatter clean water on it, you get a nice little effect. I really like that too. I need to do that more often, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's a nice. Nice effect, definitely. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, but anyway, folks, thanks everybody for tuning in. We had a nice little crowd here for a Friday night. We got 180 likes on the video, so we at least had, I think we, what were the numbers we had here? We had a pretty good amount of numbers. 141, it looks like, is the peak at one time. So awesome, man. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, yeah, I'm going to add this to my site later on if anybody's interested. Uh, definitely check out my site later on. I'll show you guys one more time here. Uh, SchaeferFineArt.com Got some drawings on there like these. Got some paintings like the ones you just saw. Some other things as well. A lot of cool stuff on there. Also a support page where you can PayPal, Venmo. I got Threadless. I got some t-shirts and stuff. Check that out. I got a Patreon page where you can support me monthly on there. And a Bandcamp page where I create music, instrumental stuff I usually use. I mainly use that stuff for my YouTube channel. But I also create music in my own time just for fun. Everything I do is for fun, man. You know, I just have fun. But I hope everybody stays safe. Have a good weekend. And, uh, yeah, there's the painting one last time. And I'll see you guys uh, next week, hopefully. We'll do some more live streams Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But uh, take care of yourself. Peace, everybody.